In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a ponytail to your character ring. I'm Luciano and this is the Adventures of Lollipop Man. Today's episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. This is an add-on video to the Secrets of Rigify series. So you can just go watch that one and remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's dive in. We have our character here. It's the same one we finished the last time in The Secrets of Rigify, but I've added a ponytail. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit more like a hippie or maybe you can tweak it a little bit and get a female version of the character. Doesn't matter. So we're going to add this ponytail. I'm gonna do this the best way I think it should be done. There's several ways. You can just get into your meta rig and then just add extra bones if you are at that stage. But in this case, I I only have my final rig so I'm going to hide my final rig and I'm going to create a new meta rig so I'm going to go to an armature and I don't even need a meta rig I'm just gonna create a simple single bone and I'm going to actually even delete it and I'm going to with shift C I'm going to put the 3d cursor in the center of the scene and I'm going to create a basic copy chain so if I go into the edit mode of the armature, you can see that in the edit mode, as we showed it in the first video, you can find actually sample types. And I'm going to create a basic copy chain. And that's gonna create three little balls. And so we're going to look at it from the side. I'm going to turn on X-rays. I'm just going to go to active element. So now we can turn from that one, but I want this one to be the active element. And I'm gonna position them on the way of my ponytail. And so the first one is going to go first second one is go to go second third one like so and then the last one and so obviously this is not enough right i want to have a little bit more control over this ponytail and so two things first one is in some cases you may want to have this ponytail be straight because that's gonna improve the deformation if you want to turn it all the way up or all the way down uh, but in this case because this ponytail will probably just stay pointing down most of the time and just overlap a little bit which we are going to to talk about in a further video you can just live with this it has enough subdivisions and we're gonna just add enough bones for this to work well and so i'm just going to grab this one and make sure it's not even that relevant that you get exactly on the edge loops but for instance what i'm thinking about here is that i'm going to make it one bigger a little bit smaller a little bit smaller so like slightly like in a progressive scale down. And also obviously this is kind of like a separate part. So you think about how it moves. So for instance, that part where it's tied, usually is like one strong part. And then from there, the rest of the movement starts. So I'll try to put a pivot there and then have this one pivot from there and so on. And that one probably won't bend much. I'm thinking always about how I'm going to animate, right? So something like, like this, cool. So now what's the difference between creating one bone and just creating a basic copy chain on the one side it's the fact that they're already with the base name and it's kind of it's screwed up because as you can see the first ones are one two three and then you get zero zero four zero zero five zero zero six it could be either way i prefer using the blender conventional naming system which is three digits so i'm just going to go Control f2 which will allow me to batch rename all these guys and so i'm going to change the dot zero and replace it with dot zero zero and that's it okay so now we got we don't have anything because we didn't really do anything so we'll do it again so this is what we need to do but we don't want to do it in objects we want to do it to own oh, uh, the data type that we're selecting now we do that so now we see we've changed those and now they match the rest of them you could have done it backwards yes you could have so we have our ponytail and now we can actually rename them as well to bone and then change it to pony tail actually i'll just do lowercase on all of that because it should be like and okay and so now six bones are called ponytail one two three four five six so we got this ready <laughs> Now we're going to go to object mode and we're going to generate a rig. Normally this would say override to just make sure that it's set to new and then you generate that rig and then we get a new rig called rig 001. As you can see, obviously I forgot everything that I taught you before. So I'm going to delete this 
and I'm going to select that armature and as you can see its origin is over there and it should be at the bottom so that's why I wanted to create it from the 3d cursor there so I'm going to go to object set origin and origin to 3d cursor now we got that and as you can see it has transformed and that's why when we executed the rig generation then the rig went down to zero and it was offset so what we want to do is with this armature selected I'm going to go to object set origin 3d cursor which is right now in the center of the scene and as you can see now the location of this went to zero because now it's matching the zero of the scene but I only moved the origin and not the bones the bones were kept in the same place so now I'm gonna generate and you'll see that I created it and now we get this armature and we get this little master bone and this is called rig 2 let's call this ponytail so we can differentiate and then armature, we're gonna call it pony meta rig, which is the one to generate it. Now we have, as you can see, I'm gonna hide the meta rig. What it generated was a few layers, one where there's that bone at the bottom, one where is our controller bones, which I can control like so, and then one with the deformation bones and one with the original bones as usual, right? So the only ones that we don't have are the mechanism bones because there is one-to-one -one connection between the controller and the deformation one. <laughs> And so what we want to do now is we want to weight directly the ponytail to this set of bones and you'll see why. So I'm going to go control P, automatic weights, and if I go now to this pose mode, you can see it, it works, right? It works in fairly okay manner. There's also some little things to adjust there, probably something to adjust there, but this is already kind of working, right? It's more or less what we need. We, you probably won't animate that one that much. Maybe that one will move a little bit like this, and then the rest of them are the ones that are gonna do most of it, right? So this is probably just enough for most cases. Let's go further. We want this guy, to be part of the other armature because we could potentially parent this new ponytail armature to our main rig. The problem with that then is that you'll break the most interesting things about how the pose mode works is that you have an action because you now would need two actions for the one character, one for the character, one for the ponytail. What, what you want to have is usually one action with the entire animation of the character so you can handle it easily, so you can like copy and paste from one file to the other or link to one file or to another one because that will be what would mean that you will just drag that data block instead of like uh, dragging two easy right and so one of the reasons that we wanted to weight this separately though is because we weighted it separately there's no other bones getting in between so every single piece of weight went to these bones and we don't don't really need to touch them much unless you want to tweak them further but this is already decent enough <laughs> And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on back my rig and I'm going to join them. So I'm going to select that one, select my original rig and then control J to join. And as you can see, my bones disappeared. They didn't disappear. The only reason they seem to have disappeared is because this armature has some different layers that were hidden and the layers that contain those bones are hidden at the moment. And those bones were in the first layer. So there we go, they're back now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move them to a separate layer. And I recall that back when we did this, we created a set of uh, groups called the extras. And I think it's still here, it's there, the extras. And also by some mistake, I left some of these ones here. We don't have like a delete empty groups. So we're just gonna delete them by hand. This one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That should be all. And then we get the groups that we created, exactly. So if I deleted one by mistake that I shouldn't have deleted, then those controllers will become black, like this one, which is not assigned to any bone group. But as you can see, they're all good. And this one is not assigned to anything and so with L I can select the entire chain because they're connected and now I'm going to assign it to the extras first of all and also I'm just going to select everything that's extras by clicking one of them and pressing shift G I get the select group and now I'm gonna select that group and I'm going to add them to one layer which is that one there that you can see here right by pressing M and just looking for that number which is that one 
Now that layer is separate and this is the extras, the ones that you really want to use but not necessarily need to use them all the time. It's probably like one of the last passes, it's not going to be on your blocking pass, most likely it's fine tuning of different things, right? Maybe those shouldn't leave with those ones there and those one there or maybe they should. I'm going to leave it here just for example purposes. So now we can turn off again or our layers, so I'm going to turn off those ones and that one I keep it off and as you can see now the the entire armature is just one but our ponytail is still separate so now the only thing i need to do for that is to redirect the weighting and so this was expecting an armature called ponytail and now we're gonna call it uh change it to rig so now select this guy you're gonna see now it's working again right if you want to weight it and stuff like that properly you can go to my video on weight painting in this case what i'm going to do is just add on top of the armature a smooth corrective which will make this a little bit smoother when bending as you can see it actually works way nice and i don't need to weight paint it takes a little bit of a toll on performance but not enough that i care about it also you can always turn it off while you're animating and then back on uh, to check out that everything is nice and smooth and so we're missing just the one step we had created that group but we didn't create a layer for that on our ui and so we need to modify this UI so we can turn it on and off, right? Because now we have that and then where's that layer, right? Sometimes you want to have everything else on, but you don't want to have those guys on. And so we're just going to add one layer more to this set of layers. And that's really easy. So I'm going to open one thing here and don't be scared. We're gonna see some code. I'm not a coder by any measurement. And like, I'm only going to copy, paste, and change some name here. So we're going to go here to the rig UI, which is the one that was generated with our rig. And as you can see, this is not that hard to, to look at. Those are the columns that represent those buttons and how they connect to these layers. And for instance, if we look at the tweak one, the tweak one is an index 10. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But this is wrong because Blender counts the layers from 0 onwards, not starting from 1. So we'll just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this layer corresponds to the tweak button. So if I click that one, you can see that now this tweak is the only one. So what I want is actually layer 11. And so I'm just going to copy and paste one of this. Before before we continue, as you can see, there's also this little row here called row and between two of this, there's one. And that means that this separates, if I want to have two buttons in the same row, I don't need to put one of these lines in between them. And so what I'm going to do is have tweak on one side and then extras on the other side, for instance. And so we're going to do that. And by the way, we're going to change this trozo which should have been torso to spine because actually the torso is this part of the body and the spine will actually include up to, up to the head. So we're gonna change that to spine here and we're going to do our other tweak, which is just going to copy this entire thing, copy. You have to be mindful of the spacing and stuff like that. So if it was like that, you just copy paste it. And then this is going to be the index of the layer that we're going to be using, which is 11. And then the text is going to be uh, extras. So now we just need to run it. Boom, you see, now it changed, the new one appeared, and I'm not sure I like it that much because they kind of seem mixed, so I'm going to add one of these in between. And you can play with this a lot. That was not what I wanted to do, actually, as you can see. So you can keep on playing with this all of what you want. Let's do something like so. See, if this works. Okay, that's not too bad. Maybe I need to not have that one there. Boop, there we go. And I'm just gonna kill one of these ones so it's not too separated. Yeah, that can that can work. Like in, interface wise, just trying to make some visual separation. Uh, maybe even actually make them closer to the root because they're kind of like special buttons. Yeah, that kind of feels okay. Cool. So we got our tweaks, we got our extras, and then we got our main body controls for everything and our root. Perfect. And so we're just going to close this guy here and we're ready to animate. 
it. You see, it's not too hard. As I said before, you can also use this technique to add cape or maybe an extra limb to your character that you hadn't thought of at the beginning without having to trash all the work that you have done already. So let me know in the comments below what will you add to your characters. Like if you like, subscribe and see me next time. Thank you.